Well, you ended up after the Cerrone fight, you got a win against Gil Melendez, someone who is a nemesis, I guess, of Josh there. He's only faced him three times. So <laughs> there was a clo- it was a close fight, split decision win. And what I was told is that Joe Silva did not have kind words for you at this moment. And, and he basically told you you were never going to be a champion there because you're never going to get that shot. And then all of a sudden you were given that uh, – opponent in Anthony Pettis that everyone was looking at is to be the guy and, and he had lost the championship to Dos Anjos and you got to win against him and that kind of puts you in that position where they put you against RDA and a lot of people were thinking at the time he's almost you know unbeatable you came in there in the first round and knocked him out you were all over him you talk about finishing and it was how close were you? Because you put so much out on him, and you were hitting him with big shots. You had him hurt for probably two minutes, it seemed like, of that yeah. fight that you were going after him. I, when I caught RDA, I caught him with a punch. Uh, my box, my old boxing trainer, Mo, um, shout out to him. Uh, it's called an anaconda. He called it the anaconda. He would say all the time, Eddie, throw the anaconda. And the anaconda is like... It's it's a it's a it's a right hook, but you 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 make it long like this. You don't you don't hook, and you just turn your hip and make it super long. And what it does is when when you're not really connecting against a guy, and they have a four ounce glove, if you get a dip back like this, you'll you'll the reach will connect and maybe clip him here. But if he stays if he stays with his shoulders good, you catch him right behind the glove, like behind the ear. And we always worked this this anaconda. It would be a jab, and when I, when I would throw the jab, I would I would remove my left foot when I threw the jab, and I would just turn nice and long. And on south poles, it was like a clean shot, almost almost right behind the ear. And I was hitting that in in sparring all the time against the south poles, and we got him with it. Like we got him with the anaconda. That kind of that loosened them up really bad, and um, I I went in for the kill. But he wasn't he wasn't going out, and I remember at a certain point going, "This is it for you, man," because um, <laughs> because you pretty much spent yourself. I threw like 175 punches in like a minute, and I was just like, "You got to get him out of here." There's no you know burn burn the ships type thing, and um, that's kind of what I did. I just went went all in. I'm like, "This is it. This is the moment," you know. So, but after winning the title, so you win the title, and your your next opponent is Connor, correct? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I had talked to you a little bit. Um, I think we were we were either DMing or we we're back and forth on something, but we were talking, and I said because I was asking you something else about something else, but you you let him get into your mind in that fight. What's your regret with that fight in terms of was it the pre, like all the press, all the other stuff because. I, you had told me specifically, you're like, yeah, the, the the training was to wrestle or at least get the wrestling going and then move on to the boxing after a little bit. But where was it in that fight that this, the wrestling never really got started? I would have, if if I could go back and do this over again, I had nothing to do with the actual, the actual fight, the event. I would have, I would have took some serious time off after I won the world title. That was like, it took me 13 years to win that to manifest that dream that I thought forever. So like I wrote, I, I made a vision board when I was like 19 or 20 in a little shit house, me and my wife, um, you know, we, I, I bought my first house. It was like a hundred thousand, but real small house. But like I made a vision board and on my vision board, not like, not like, like that big ass house you're in now with <laughs> nothing, nothing like this. Bad boy. <laughs> but I made this vision board and on this vision board, it's, it had a ranking. I'm going to be ranked this. Um, I'm going to make, I'm going to make this much per fight. Um, I, I had s- stupid stuff, people, stuff, people that I wanted my kitchen to look a certain way in my bathroom. Like I, I got as detailed as possible with what I wanted. Like, what do you want and why? And just put it on this board and kind of use your imagination. So I did that and I pasted all stuff on a board and, um, it was after after the RDA fight. I don't have the board, um, but I think back. It was after the RDA fight. I'm in my bed. I'm laying down, 
and I, I won it, but I still, I was, uh, I was unhappy, you know? I, so I'm like, what, what do you, in my own mind, I'm thinking, um, so what you got what you want it. And, uh, so what's next? And that's my mind's like, so what's next? And now I'm like, well, everything on that vision board manifested the money, the ranking, the titles, the everything. And I realized I'm like, you have no targets, zero. You have no, my vision manifested. I I didn't create, I didn't create more. I didn't create a, a bigger imagination for myself. Like, Hey, how about you should have sat down and reassessed your goals for moving forward after this? It was like, I got to where I want it and I never had a plan when I got there. Um, so I would have took time off and really soaked that in. I didn't soak it in. I was just like, it was like another title for me, like MFC, Bellator, like any other one. It was like, great. You got it. Now, now what are you going to do? And, um, I should have been more grateful for the position I was in and I should have soaked it in and, and really enjoyed it. And then, and then came back and, you know, passionately and got into a training camp and, and fought that way. I just, I don't feel like I had a lot of gratitude. I felt like the belt was like a, a burden, not a blessing. I'm like, Oh mm-hmm. man, now I, now I got to do this and I got to go to this interview and I got to, I didn't, that's not, I didn't, I didn't want to do any of that. I didn't look at it as a blessing. I was like more like I should have, I should have had more gratitude about the position I was in. If you were going to look back at that night, because that was the, the, the first big fight the UFC was back in New York with all the pressure of everything and the big title fights. And they had, they had a bunch of title fights throughout, you know, that show, a lot of things going on. When you look back at, did it seem like it just came and went super fast and it was just over before you even realized it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was really, it was a really fun fight week. Like I don't remember having that much fun during a fight week, like the banner back and forth. Um, I never, <laughs> for me, like at the time I'm like, I have, I got five, four, maybe I, I'm like, I have four children on whatever this guy says. I'm like, I'm 30. So I'm not 20 something years old anymore, but like, I didn't take anything personal. The banner back and forth is what it was. It was fun. It was fun for me. Um, but uh, yeah, I was, I was honestly, I left, the Madison Square Garden, I was crushed. I we I went in a van. I remember we we drove in a van back to Philadelphia, and I and I cry I cried like a like a little kid, like a like a child, from New York almost all the way to Philadelphia. Like cried like like I lost, <clears throat> like I died inside. Like it was like like all everything I did, everything that like I freaking worked for you. I got myself to this, to this largest stage and I did that. And that like, it wasn't like, I'm like, that's not what you're capable of. And you got yourself on this stage for everyone to see you. And, um, you know, you didn't, when you don't put your best foot forward or you don't have your best night, it's like, fuck man. It was, it was brutal. It took me a long time to get past, like a few months to just get over and realize, like, I'm I'm in fist fighting, like that I, the that's end of the what world. I came up with. At at the end of it all, I'm like, why and what could I have done? And it, at the end of it all, I'm like, you fist fight, man. Like yeah. it's volatile. Like bad shit happens. You could be as prepared as you want. You're in fist fighting, like shit goes down and it, it could go bad quickly. And, um, you hope you prepare properly and you go in there and you hope the best, but it, sometimes it doesn't. And that's, that's what I came up with. John has this saying, he says, like, if the worst thing that's ever happened to you in your life is you lost a fight, fuck, you're in pretty good shape, brother. You got a good life. You know what I mean? It's the truth. Like when you yep. think, You've got a pretty damn good life. Because, I mean, honestly, like you said, I've fucking bought this house for $100,000, like this little shitty house, right? My first house. Now look behind you on that wall. You got all those belts from all these other organizations, you know, and you are you got, what, four beautiful kids, yeah. beautiful wife. You got a great life. You're, you're doing everything you ever wanted and dreamt of, man. You could still be doing concrete. I always <laughs> look back at those type of things. That's what I say. I'm like, 
some people look back and go, God, I would have been living in a cubicle working, you know, behind a computer screen all day. Screw that. There's no way like doing concrete, doing construction. No way, man. Not absolutely not. I mean, before I actually quit my, like my, my second to last job, when I moved back down to California, I was doing roofing. I did construction. Oh my God. There's time. only one thing worse than concrete. It's roofing. <laughs> it's roofing. Yeah, Cause you're standing roof. on something like this the whole day. <laughs> yeah. You're all standing like this. You're laying down the, the you're laying down in the California, sheets and it's just, you were roofing in California. So California, oh. then I was doing it in Idaho first and I started doing it down here when I first got here. It was brutal, man. Like and I, I did about six months of it here. I'm like, screw this. So I got a job at a tech company, like not a tech company, uh, like, uh, it was called Fry's Electronics. I was an undercover, like, officer. So it was all indoors. I was like, thank God. I just walked around and playing clothes, arrest people for stealing shit. I mean, you'd get three or four arrests every day. It was so much fun. <laughs> but it didn't pay shit. And it was horrible hours, man. It was just horrible. It didn't pay anything. Anyways, but, uh, to think what all the hit of all the things you've done in your, in your career, you know, you got the Bellator belts behind you. You got the UFC belts, you know, and, uh, what, Elite XE belts, back, like, Everything. Don't you feel? Don't you feel blessed to be where you're at? I do. It. It took me. I didn't. Yeah. It took me till now to be able to like soak things in, sit back, and be like, all right. Uh, yeah. I. If I'm guilty of anything, it's not like, you know, sitting back and smelling the roses. And I. And my wife reminds me of that like a lot. And like, it's. It's the reason why I was like successful in fighting was I was I was never complacent. I always was like, all right, you have this, but you know, this is the next step and you want to go here. I never was okay with where I was at. And that was a blessing and a curse for me because I never, no matter what I got, I never felt like good about myself. Like no matter what I didn't matter. Like, it's like, Oh, you thought you wanted that and now you got it and you don't feel good about yourself. So like it was a blessing and a curse. Like what, uh, what most people would see is like success. It was like, is it just like, this is like my craziness inside my head that I was just trying to collect things and I don't know why I want them. 